lifestyle segment of the weekend show. Um, uh, we have to sincerely apologize for the technical um, difficulty we we're experiencing on our end. So um, joining me to discuss International Youth Days, Ebenezer Wikina, who is a founder of Policy Shapers. So International Youth Day. Ebenezer, could you tell us the significance of the day and why exactly we are celebrating? Yeah, no, International Youth Day is a day set aside to celebrate the contributions and also um, the significance of young people in today's world. Um, youths make up, especially in Ni Nigeria, youths make up um, at least 62 or 62 to 65 percent of our population. Uh, and this is an age that is under 25 years. So we're predominantly a young country. Yeah. Can you see Kemi? Yes, Can you see Kemi? Yes, Okay, okay. So we're, we're predominantly a very young country and you know, people are making strides in various spheres and various parts of our country and our, and our, and our society. So, so International Youth Day is set aside to celebrate, you know, these achievements, but also celebrate the fact that um, it's the youth who become adults, right? And so, like, you know, there's need to ensure that the issues that affect young people are put on the development agenda and the government agenda. And to ensure that the government is responding to the issues that um, you know affect young people very very closely, so things like youth unemployment, mm. uh, things like uh, policy development related to the IT, ICT and IT education, all of those kind of sectors are put on the radar on International Youth Day. Okay, so yeah. this year's theme, empowering young persons for peace and security. What does that mean to you, as a young person? Yeah, no, I mean. Young people have a huge role to play in ensuring and maintaining peace in the in the country. I mean, if you look at the elections, for example, um, when the election season comes and we have all of the unrest across across the country, most of the people who are often driving these things cannot be the old people. It's not people in their sixties or seventies who can run around and carry ballot boxes. It's people who are in their thirties, right? Thirties and twenties. So, um, so young people are an active player in the peace of the of the country and. I think also in the security of the, of the country, not just because you have youths and the military and the police, but also because young people also, because of our population um, and because of the use of things like IT and ICT, mm. we can actually begin to uh, feed into police mechanisms like early warning, early response. Um, you know, when they say, if you see something, say something. Yeah. So being able to be monitoring, uh, monitoring your community and your, I mean, young people are the ones who are part of vigilante, right? If you go to the streets across across the country. So I think just just knowing that young people have an active role to play. Okay. All right. Um, Ebenezer, can you hear me? I can. I can hear you. Okay, beautiful. So, Policy um, Shapers, could you tell us more about that, your organization and how you um, play your own role in empowering the, empowering the young generation and supporting the young generation? Yeah. No, so, so our, our Policy Shapers, our focus is, um, is centered on the vision that young people can play an active role in policy development, right? Okay. And that um, as opposed to just being... Um, partakers, just people who are just passive partakers in the policy process, mm. that they can actually be active players in that, in that space. Um, so they can bring up policy ideas, they can review existing policy ideas, whether it's laws or budgets or uh, policy documents. They can even also ask questions. They can be questions about the most basic things that, that affect them. Um, so, so, so our policy shapers, we, we organize things like policy hackathons. Um, which is a space where we bring across universities um, in the in the country to come together to brainstorm on ideas that they can use to make education better, make security better, make and how can you solve unemployment, youth unemployment, and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so our policy shape has been doing that. We also know that young people are a, a huge uh, population, so we use the young people as well, or we make young people to, to become advocacy ambassadors as well. So we've been advocating for several um, issues um, that young people care about. One of them is the um, IELTS issue, um, that is the English test issue, uh, and we've been able, because of the, the pressure of young people working with our organization, we've been able to cause policy changes in over 40 universities around the world. So, um, yeah, so, so, so these are the kind of uh, programs that we've worked on over the past three, three to, to, to four years, um, and uh, that's, that's how we kind of like lead policy and advocacy within our organization. 
All right. Um, I have a guest uh, that has joined me here in the studio, uh, David Nwachuku, who is the founder, then advisory and curator Abuja Global Shapers. Good morning, David. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. So we're talking about International Youth Day. What does that day mean to you and why are we celebrating it? So for me, International Youth Day essentially is just a day to spotlight um, the abilities that are innately in young people mm -hmm. in terms of contributions to society, contributions yeah. to policy making, contributions to the key decisions that affect them because at the end of the day this is the demographic that is going to take over from the current workforce. So it's very important to make sure that their opinions, their insights, their well-being mm -hmm. is prioritized. So how does Global Shapers come into this conversation of empowering youths? Okay. Um, so a little, permit me a little backstory. The okay. Global Shapers Community, it's an initiative of the World Economic Forum okay. and it was founded in 2011 as sort of a response to youth uprising, um, such as per many people remember the Arab Spring. And so the World Economic Forum saw it as an avenue to just create a platform where young people would be able to be involved in key decision making, mm. um, but still conduct social impact projects that has one ear to the grassroots. And then that, you're able to use that to inform the decisions you'd make at the highest levels. Because previously, your powers that be, there's always a disconnect. And so it's with just a new style of leadership just to make sure that young voices are prioritized. Everyone is under 30 mm -hmm. in the Global Shapers community. Yeah. Okay. So what are the most pressing issues young people in Nigeria today face? <laughs> I think the biggest one would definitely be youth unemployment. Okay. You know, the numbers are scary. At the last check, it was upwards of 40%. And it's more of, I wouldn't really say it's any fault, but I think it's more of a skills issue. Um, skills, education, and of course, economic instability. So all of those things tied together, I think that is the, the biggest challenge facing young people. Mm. Because we, our young people are very resilient you go to any academic institution and you see students that are trying to you know sell something alongside their education they want to be able to do things for themselves um, but sometimes it's either a knowledge gap or the lack of opportunity okay so how can the government now come in to help um you know reduce this unemployment rate for example as you mentioned and help youths in general so a number of things educational reform. Mm. I think for now there's too much of a focus on um, formal education. In different parts of the world, vocational education is seen, blue collar jobs are seen as something noble and something to be proud of. You know, our polytechnics are seen as, if you don't get into the university, yeah. you can get into. So those vocations, that, those are gaps. You know, quality artisans, you have people who complain about building, uh, um, you know, their own houses and they are complaining that uh, the person who did the tiling did a shoddy job but those are quality things that in other parts of the world are great um, sources of livelihood okay. so that and then policies that are specifically targeted towards youth inclusion in terms of how um, the hiring process is for mm. most institutions and whatnot yeah you said youth inclusion which leads me to my um, next question that has to do with youth participation mm -hmm. what role how can young people you know be involved in decision making processes in uh, bills and all of that how, how can young people also play their own part to effect this change that we seek young people need to be unafraid <laughs> i think that's the main thing to step up Mm. Um, and I, well, I don't get, you think young people are stepping up? They are, they are. But I feel like we need to be a bit more audacious because our parents and our grandparents were they took and you know took things by the horn. Mm. So in terms of um, you know finding out who your local government chairman is, a lot of young people don't even know subnational sure. politics. They only focus on on um, the federal you know, who, and the federal yeah. so you know you start in, infiltrating those places mm. you know look for how to volunteer ask i want to intern for you sir don't pay me as the lga chairman and look for how to learn the ropes look for how to you know let your voice be heard if there's mm. a town hall if there's a dialogue most of these things are open to the public find your way inside but i think it's more of an awareness thing so 
probably those of us who are in this space, that's more work I would say that we need to do in terms of making our own colleagues, young people aware that these are the opportunities they can have to dialogue with people making decisions. Okay. Yeah. All right, so let's bring um, Ebenezer back in the conversation. Hi, Ebenezer. Yes, hi. Yes, um, I'm sure you've been hearing my conversation um, so far with um, David. Can you share some examples, some inspiring stories so far from your organization in the way they've been able to help um, young people and the young generation in general? Yeah, no, I think I think David is spot on in the sense that youth are beginning to take their place in, in the policy conversation. Um, maybe not as much as we would like at the sub-national level, uh, where we want to see more engagement when it comes to the state and local governments. Um, but I think people are beginning to ask a lot more questions. And I think that that's, that's the foundation of democracy. Because democracy, with the only constant word in the definition of democracy, is people. Right? So, so if the people are not doing anything or asking questions or playing their role, then you don't have a democracy. So um, from my organization, I mean, I gave an example earlier of the reform ILTS campaign, uh, which basically was young people taking on institutions all over the world. Um, you have young Africans uh, studying in several institutions around the world. And even though English is their formal language, I mean, we're speaking English right now, right? Um, they still have to prove to an institution that they can speak English for a cost that is more than three times their minimum wage. And the result for that you know, test expires every two years. And we had young people come together and say, this doesn't make any, any, any sense, and we particular policy. And started to organize, you know, organizing young people from across this institution, young people from across the country, um, on WhatsApp groups, asking questions, crunching data, finding a way to make sure that we can have an argument against, against this particular issue. And, you know, the long and short story is that from just advocacy, whether it's social media, to hosting Twitter spaces, writing letters to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, mm -hmm. engaging these engaging the respective em embassies concerned, the, the UK Home Office in London, uh, the institutions, the admissions offices, the vice chancellors, just all of this chain of engagements especially using the young people who work across, who are schooling across these universities, uh, we've been able to cause, cause change on this. And um, again, yeah, 40, 40 plus universities have now changed their policy and a lot more are still, are still uh, reforming their policy in this, in this regard. So this is a small issue, right? It's a small issue, just, just test, English test, but it gives you a model for how young people can influence policy from a general perspective if we actually all come together and, org and organize. And we, we saw that with NSAS as well, right? So that's the NSAS. We saw that as well with the recent process. Just yeah. being able to put together that our, our, our power of numbers, um, I think is something we, we need to leverage a lot more. Yeah. Okay, that's something we need to leverage a lot more. Okay, um, David, how about you? What are some um, inspiring success stories um, from your organization so far? So at the Global Shapers community, at least in Abuja, where we're 17 hubs across Nigeria, but in Abuja, I think we've been able to really lend ourselves as a sort of a think tank. So we came to that realization at some point last year that, okay, beyond you know, interventions, yeah. how can we um, offer ourselves? So we have dialogue series. We had one with the Minister of Foreign Affairs in May, and we used that opportunity to tell the minister, okay, this is the 4D agenda. Um, how can young people play a part in it? This is what we can do. We can develop a toolkit for um, young people to know, okay, how do we talk about Nigeria online mm. in terms of the diaspora aspect? We also worked on a cryptocurrency paper that the uh, ministry was able to take to um, the World Economic Forum annual meeting in Dalian in China in June. And so we have subsequent engagements that we're planning to do with the Minister of Communications, Information and Digital Economy, and also the Ministry of Environment ahead of COP. So basically, you know, these are the brightest minds. We have experience in climate, environment, and all of these things. This is what we have to offer. This is what we have to support. Because at the end of the day, we know that um, our leaders cannot do it on their own. They can't do everything on their own. Mm. And that's where, you know, nation building, togetherness, knowing that you are supported, the young people, we support you in this way. We're not antagonizing and complaining, but we are coming up with solutions that can help accelerate the progress that we desire. Mm. I like the fact that it's not just interventions, you're doing, you're taking proactive measures to effect change. Um, so before I let you both go, Ebenezer, I would like you to share your 
hopes and expectations for the young generation? I understand you're doing your own path, but what are those hopes, what are those expectations that you have uh, for young people looking forward? Yeah, no, no, thank, thank you so much. I think just as David said, one of the biggest issues affecting us as a generation is unemployment. Um, and, I, and I hope that we, the, the country, um, that's not just the federal government, but the state government as well, can declare a state of emergency on addressing the issues that affect unemployment. Because like when people are not gainfully employed, that's what leads to, we spoke about peace and security earlier, right? That's what leads to people becoming, you know, um, used as dogs and all of these kind of things that we see across our society. So we need to find a way to address unemployment. And I think it needs to be addressed head on. I think this is the biggest challenge of our generation. And I think young people as well who are entrepreneurial, who are starting businesses, who are solving problems, um, I think we all have a role to play. So this is not just the government's uh, thing. It's not just the public uh, sector that can, that can fix it. I think the private sector has a huge role as well as a non-profit sector to, to also fix fix this. So this is my, my hope. My hope is that we can have in Nigeria where every young person, at least, or at least one out of two young you know, people can be gainfully employed um, and actually have a way to fulfill their purpose here on earth, can use their talents to solve local uh, challenges across across the country and are fully part of the conversation at the state and national national levels. So so that's my that's my hope for a Nigerian country for young people. David, I'd also like to hear your own hopes and expectations for a brighter um, future for the young generation. Yeah, I completely agree with um, Ebenezer. And I think I would also, you know, since we've been talking policy, I'd like to see more um, youth participation. Because at the end of the day, if something has to change in terms of the candidates that we see coming out for presidency, mm. coming out for governorship, young people have to step up and begin to immerse themselves in the system. Of course, you don't start overnight. You start building, you start working your way up so we yeah. can now have that shift because it can't just come magically. You need the experience and the tenure for mm. the average Nigerian to support you and say, you savvy. You know the thing. <laughs> yeah. All right. Beautiful. Thank you so much, David. Thank you so and thank much. And thank you so much, um, Ebenezer, who joined back truly. All right. So um, that's it for the lifestyle segment. We need to play our own part in order to empower and support uh, the young generation. Happy International Youth Day to all the youths um, across the world. All right, so we'll bring you more on the weekend show. Do stay with us. We'll be right back.